Are you using Terraform Cloud and wish you didn't have to store static credentials? In this video, we'll learn about workload identity, which lets you dynamically provision credentials with OIDC. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to be looking at a newly announced feature, which is called Workload Identity in Terraform Cloud. But before we get into that, I want to mention one thing. I am in the process of updating my Terraform Associate Certification Guide. So if you are looking to get your Terraform Associate Certification, check out the link down below. You can pick up my book on LeanPub for a mere $15. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about static credentials and Terraform Cloud. If you're using Terraform Cloud today, you're probably interacting with one of the major cloud providers, whether it's Azure, AWS, GCP, you know, whatever. And in order to interact with those cloud providers, you need credentials to do that. When your Terraform code runs, it needs credentials to access those cloud providers. And traditionally, there's a few ways you could go about that. Uh, the first way you could go about that is to statically store the credentials per workspace. So each workspace would have the credentials for the cloud and the subscription or account you want to use. That's one way. Another way that you could do it is by storing the credentials in a variable set at the organization level and making it available to workspaces to use. But again, we're still storing static credentials. A fourth way to do it would be to spin up your own cloud agents, which is only available on the business tier, and then use integrated identity with those agents to do the authentication. So you'd have to associate an identity from the IM or Azure Active Directory, whatever provider you're using with that machine. And then that machine would be able to use those credentials. So you can do that, but you have to be at the business tier and you have to manage your own agents, which is not great. So what's the option here? What, what else could we possibly do? Well, if you remember a video that I did not that long ago, I talked about how you can use OIDC and JOTS with GitHub Actions to dynamically generate credentials for Azure. And this, this works across all the different cloud providers. Well, guess what? Terraform Cloud can now do that too. And if you want to know more about static versus dynamic credentials, the talk that I gave at HashiConf Global is now live and a link should be appearing like now. <laughs> okay. Speaking of HashiConf Global, guess what they announced? During the presentation on Terraform and infrastructure automation at HashiConf Global this year, they announced that workload identity was coming to Terraform Cloud. And if you don't know what that is or how it would work, hey, they put together this awesome graphic for you. So in this graphic, you can see that when a workspace kicks off a run, that run is given to an agent and that agent gets a JOT from the identity service within Terraform Cloud. It can then present that token out to the cloud provider you're working with or whatever service, and that can serve as a way of authenticating to that service, which will then generate a new token that gives that workspace access to do what it needs to do provisionally with that cloud provider. So that's what's happening in a nutshell. Now, unfortunately, they didn't really announce much beyond the fact it was coming available. They also haven't really updated the documentation for how it's going to work. So I thought, why don't I dig in and try to put together an example of how it would actually work? And that's what we're going to view here. The first example we're going to see for workload identity authenticates to Azure Active Directory. And I have this stored in a repository called TFC Azure Example on the branch TFC workload ID. And don't worry, the link is down in the description so you don't have to scribble it down or anything. Let's take a look at what's in the files, starting with the main.tf. Now this is the actual resources that are going to be deployed in Azure, and it's pretty straightforward. We're simply deploying a resource group and a virtual network in that resource group. So taking in standard information and generating that resource group and that virtual network. Nothing too exciting going on here. Now let's take a look at a couple of the other files. We'll start next with the terraform.tf. Now, typically this is where I put my providers and you'll note that one of the providers that I'm using is the environment provider. And this allows you to expose the environment variables that are set 
to the Terraform configuration. And that's gonna become very important in a moment because when we look at the provider declaration for Azure, we are passing it an OIDC token value for authentication. And that token value is coming from the environment variable TFC workload identity token. So that is how the token is exposed inside the agent for any workspace run. It's exposed through that environment variable. Now, how are we getting that environment variable? Well, we're using that environment provider. And if we take a look in the OIDC file, it doesn't have to be named OIDC. That was just from my own clarity. I generated a data source called environment variables using the environment provider, and it loads all of the current environment variables into a map that you can reference by key. I also decided to save the contents of that identity token to a file called dot azure slash token so we can see what's actually in the token and this is useful for troubleshooting if you're having trouble okay so that's what's set up in the repository now let's take a look at the workspace that is leveraging that repository here in terraform cloud the workspace in question is tfc azure example and as i said this is wired into that repository tracking that branch so if something changes on that branch it'll kick off a run here Let's take a look at the variables that we have set for this workspace. Now there's a number of environment variables and a Terraform specific variable. Let's take a look at the environment variables and start with all the ones that begin with ARM. These are for the provider, the Azure RM provider. We're giving it the client ID. So that is the service principle that will be used for authentication, the tenant where that service principle is and the subscription we're going to be operating on. We're also passing it the arm use OIDC to signal to the provider we're using OIDC authentication. You could also put that as a value inside the provider block, but I prefer to use environment variables whenever I can. The last one in here that's an environment variable is TFC workload identity audience. And this lets you configure the audience that will be assigned to the token that's generated. In this case, we're going with API slash slash Azure AD token exchange. And we'll see why when we go over to Azure Active Directory. The last one is a prefix. And this is used for the naming of the resource group and the virtual network that's created inside that resource group. And if we make a change to it, we can kick off the workflow and see it go through its paces. So let's actually do that now. We'll go ahead and edit that and I'll update it to OIDC3 and save the variable and kick off a run. Now that's going to change the name of the resource group and the name of the virtual network. So it's going to have to destroy both and recreate them. That is all during the plan phase that it'll tell us what it's going to do. Now, while that plan is running, let's go over to Azure Active Directory and see how things are configured there. Over in Azure Active Directory, this is the service principle that's being used, that client ID that we saw earlier in the environment variable. And I have a number of federated credentials that are configured for this service principle. And two of them are specific to the workspace that we're working on right now. One is for plan and the other one is for apply. So let's take a look at the plan one first. For the federated credential scenario, since we aren't using one of the predefined ones, I selected other issuer. The issuer is going to be HTTPS app.terraform.io. And the subject identifier is going to be the organization name, the workspace name, and then the run phase, which will be either plan or apply. And lastly, down at the bottom, we have the audience, which is pre-configured to that API Azure AD token exchange. Now you can alter that, but I can't really think of a reason why you would want to. So that's everything that's set up over on the Azure side. And you'll note going back to the federated credentials, we have one for both plan and apply because the subject identifier has to match exactly what's in the token. Wild cards are not supported in Azure AD yet. <laughs> going back to our run, as predicted, it's going to delete and recreate the resource group and the virtual network. And it's also going to create a new local file that has our workspace token in it. So let's expand that out and grab the value of the content that's going into our file. Now this is base 64 encoded. So we do want to decode this and see what's in it. So let's go over to a JSON web token decoder 
and paste that value in. Within here, we can see that the issuer is in fact app.terraform.io. The audience is API Azure AD token exchange. And the subject, the SUB, that's the subject, is the organization followed by the workspace followed by the run phase being plan. Remember, all of this has to match in your federated credentials. So if you're having trouble, you can peek in on this file and see what's going on with your token. Now, in a production scenario, you probably wouldn't want to generate this token. I uh, wouldn't want to generate this file, I should say, but for troubleshooting, it's, it's pretty helpful, honestly. Okay, so let's go back to our run and I'll go ahead and confirm and apply that run. And once it's confirmed, it's gonna go out, destroy that resource group and that virtual network and create a new version of both. Now, you know, we didn't have to put in any static credentials here. We don't have to save a password anywhere. It's using the JOT workflow to take the token it gets from Terraform Cloud, hand that off to Azure Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, make sure that everything matches inside the token with the federated credential we configured, and then reaches out to app.terraform.io to validate that the token is correct. Once all that happens, it's very happy, and it issues a temporary token from Azure Active Directory with permissions for that service principle. So that's the full workflow that's happening, and the apply has mostly completed at this point. It successfully created and destroyed some things, so we know both the plan and the apply phase are working properly. So that's the example of doing this with Azure Active Directory. Let's take a look at how this would work with HashiCorp Vault. For our HashiCorp Vault workflow, we're gonna once again start with a code repository. And this one is called TFC Vault OIDC example. Again, the link is gonna be down in the description, so don't worry about having to write it down here. Now you're gonna to have to configure your Vault server properly, and I've included a Terraform config inside the subdirectory Vault underscore config that will do exactly that. We'll take a look at that config in a moment, but first I wanna look at the actual configuration here. And in this case, let's start with the terraform.tf file. And in here, you can see, once again, we're using the environment provider, so we have access to the environment variables that include that JWT token. Now let's take a look at the main.tf file. And in here, I'm defining how the provider, the vault provider, should reach out to the vault server and connect. And within this, I'm setting the vault address using an environment variable, but I do need to tell it what authentication method to, to use. And in this case, I'm using HCP vault, so I have a namespace of admin, so I have to include the namespace in my authentication configuration block. I also have to include the mount where my authentication method is mounted, the role within that authentication method we're using, and the value of the JOT, which is going to be in that environment variable, TFC workload identity token. Now beyond that, I'm accessing a secret using a data source called vault generic secret. And the path to that secret is inside a Terraform variable called vault secret path. And I also added an environment variable data source, and that's how we're getting that environment variable, the TFC workload identity token. So that's pretty much everything that's in this configuration. Now let's take a look at the vault server and see what configuration was added there to enable this authentication workflow. I am already connected to the vault server and logged in with a token. So let's take a look at the authentication methods that are available. So we'll do vault auth list. And I have an authentication method enabled here called TFC and it's of type JOT. So we know that's what we're working with. And if we look at the configuration for that authentication method, the only thing that goes directly in the auth method configuration is the issuer. The issuer is app.terraform.io. That's also the OIDC discovery URL. In other cases, they, those two might be different, but in this case, they are the same. Within that authentication method, I created a role that, it, that the workspace is authenticating to. So let's look at the configuration for that role. And you note, a lot of this is very similar to how the federated credentials are in Azure. So our bound audience is set to vault.testing. So I gotta make sure I set the audience in my config to vault.testing. 
the bound claims is going to map to the organization and the workspace and the run phase. But you'll notice in this case, I get to use a wildcard at the end, a star. So this will work for both plan and apply. In order to do that, I have to set the bound claims type to glob and then provide a bound claim that has that star in it. But this will work with either plan or apply. And I could also do this to work with any workspace or a subset of workspaces. You have more options when you're doing it this way. The next thing I'm going to point out is the token policies. When authentication is successful, this is going to get the token policy TFC workspace OIDC, which has permissions to read the secret that's in the Terraform configuration. Okay, that's everything that's configured over on the vault side. Going back to the repository, like I said, there's a vault config folder that has this whole configuration in it. So you can just apply this configuration to a dev vault server or wherever you're running your vault server. And as long as it has a public endpoint, this will work. So you don't have to do all this configuration yourself. There's a Terraform script that'll do it for you. Now let's take a look at the workspace that is in Terraform Cloud. Back in my Terraform Cloud workspaces, let's scroll down and here's the workspace, TFC Vault OIDC example. You note that matches what I configured in the authentication role for the subject. And let's take a look at the variables that are defined in here. I have a number of environment variables and some Terraform specific variables. I'm setting the Vault namespace as an environment variable because I'm using HCP Vault and that has a default namespace of admin. If you're not using HTTP vault, you may not need to set this. I also set up Terraform logging to a higher level cause I was having a little troubleshooting issues. And so I had to turn that up <laughs> to info. I actually had it trace for a moment, but turned it back down to info for now. The TFC workload identity audience is set to vault.testing and that matches the authentication role that we defined on the vault server setting the vault address also through an environment variable. And then there's three Terraform specific variables. The vault secret path is the secret that we want to read as a data source. The vault auth login JWT role is the role inside the authentication method we want to use. And then finally, vault auth login JWT mount is the name of the authentication method we're going to use for our JWT authentication. So you put all of those together and you have a way to successfully authenticate using workload identity to your HashiCorp vault server. And that's two different ways that you can leverage the workload identity feature in Terraform cloud workspaces to talk to various cloud providers or really anything that supports OIDC type authentication. So we saw it with Azure and we saw it with HashiCorp vault. Now I will say that even though they announced this feature, there's no documentation for it really yet. And I'm assuming that the experience is going to change a little bit. In particular, they're probably gonna expose the JWT in a way that isn't just the environment variable because they don't want you to have to use that additional provider to look at the environment variables to get the token. So I think the experience is going to change, but the workflow really isn't. It's just gonna be slightly different the way you interact with that token. So keep an eye out for that. And also, Check out my video on static credentials and why they stuck. That is the presentation that I gave at HashiConf Global. That's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. So it would appear that I've become a seltzer person. I'm having lemon lime seltzer today. Yesterday it was raspberry lime, which is delicious. I never thought I'd be a seltzer person, but um, it's happened. So I apologize to my previous self for doubting the power of the seltzer. All right, bye.